Test, test, test. Hey there, team. This is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun clan battles uh, tactics, Tears of the Desert, 7 versus 7. And uh, it's going to be really interesting with the Haragumo Dragon's Breath. But before we end, if you guys see value in the channel, like, subscribe, bell button below, comment. If you see something we can do better, or if you like what you see, uh, as always, we definitely appreciate all the support in the channel. So let's get to it and build a better community. So Tears of the Desert. Now, caveat. The issue with this map that I have is that it is too spread out. It is way too open for clan battles, in my personal opinion. It's just way, way, way big, uh, especially if you look at, um, you know, you want to see Bravo here. Oops, uh, wrong there. I didn't mean to do that. Um, basically, Bravo and Charlie. Look at the massive distance you have to travel just to do anything, and it takes up a lot, a lot of time, especially with even island cover in the middle here. I mean, island cover is great for clan battles, but in my personal opinion, very, very difficult to... Uh, really, you know, I would say defend or even try to maneuver with seven ships. But the basic strategy of what I actually planned out here is just have one cruiser cap uh, Charlie and then the rest move in force into Alpha. So what does that actually look like? Uh, we're going to just take, uh, we'll, we'll take one cruiser here and just cap and potentially regroup and assess. And then we have both DDs rushing ahead to scout and spot as the uh, main bulk of the fleet actually starts taking up firing positions again around the islands. Now, I think, I believe, personal opinion, that Alpha has a way better advantage for some darn reason because of the way the islands are set up, the way you have a lot of cover, and especially, and this again, this is a disadvantage to the southern team. You, the northern team has this little piece of island right here for cover. So uh, I think it's unfair, honestly, from the northern side. Uh, Bravo side is more favorable, in my personal opinion, to do a, if I was a red team, I would just do a potential massive push or just uh, kind of just hold alpha right there. I'm sorry, that arrow didn't populate correctly. And the only other option is just to kind of sit there and get focus fired at alpha. I mean, that, that's my personal opinion. That's the two downsides of being in the south. Northern has better advantages, I would say. So uh, how would this actually work? Well, the reason why I like this strategy uh, for the northern team is because you have so many uh, tactical uh, options here that, one, you can have one pushed right through the middle, spot, kill. You have another cruiser right here, spot, kill. But the biggest thing, I think, is the bulk of the force has these options. You can either, the battleship or cruiser pushes here. If they get uh, overwhelmed, they can always turn back around and push away. You have a cruiser right here, has an island for cover. You also have this uh, spot that people like right here, this little particular area. And then, you know, of course, you have this uh, surprise flank that if you go into alpha, you're surprised from so many angles right here. It's very, very deadly. And then the other big one that I really enjoy is that you have, since I'm on DD main, you have this entire real estate here to option a you can either go around this island see cover and spot you have option b is straight up spot and torp or option c is the good old-fashioned push right in cap and see what kind of happens use your radar cruisers to support you the biggest problem i saw with this uh, match that i uh we were playing against with the red team here is that we had two destroyers really outflank them and then when you're out here in the flanks you have so many options as a destroyer player like you literally can uh just out spot them you can uh, take away their positions and then you can outmaneuver them because look at this the the furthest dd here can also flank gunboat torp whatever and then you're also other dd is also supporting in tow and it leaves this spot in the middle right here vulnerable because most of the time what do, what do cruisers do most of the battleships and cruisers that i've seen play on the side will hug this little island if you get the destroyers out to the flanks here look what you got voila you have flanking fire right into them it exposes them it spots them they have nothing to do other than seek re uh, smoke coverage or um, just going to have to fall back and you're going to kind of see that develop and then the other option the problem is the destroyer is, has a problem it can't really go here it's going to get overwhelmed by destroyers if it goes into alpha it gets overwhelmed by radar cruisers so very very difficult i would I wouldn't say impossible but very, you're at a significant disadvantage if you are the red team now the other red the aspect is if red team pushes right through the middle because it's a good thing because now you overwhelm charlie potentially and the other enemy team is probably flanking down from the south right here to southeast giving a clear option straight charlie and you have flanking fire into alpha now, here's the problem for the enemy team if I was doing this mass push. Since we are doing a mass push, the entire enemy team split up. I mean, they're sitting here busy guarding Alpha. They're worried about, hey, do I actually try to uh, go into Charlie from the center or around? It's taking them a lot of time. Yeah, give them Bravo and Charlie, but here's the problem. We've eliminated half their team, and now the destroyers can basically race ahead 
and then cap Bravo from behind, and then the rest of the enemy team, all they have to do is simple left turn, and they are now flanking Charlie from the east, giving the enemy team a very, very difficult disadvantage because they have nobody left guarding Bravo. It's unguarded. A is already there, uh, the, the friendly team. All Charlie team now has done is they've been outmaneuvered and overflanked, and that's the problem I see with the Southern. Again, I think the Southern team is at a major disadvantage. The Northern team has a bigger dis or bigger advantage. Uh, but let's say actually see how that plays out. We're, again, we're playing the Harugumo, especially if you see the Harugumo play here, style here. It is just not fair. I mean, the Hirogumo is literally a death dealer when it comes to firepower. It is putting so much firepower down range at long ranges and is drawing all the enemy fire away from um, my enemy, my my friendlies. Because look, you're gonna notice I'm gonna push ahead and see if I can start as many fires as I can, all while drawing fire from the enemy team right here. They're gonna start being focused on me and my my friendly destroyer. They're gonna look over in this direction, giving much of my my friendlies the ability to just slowly push forward to alpha because they're distracted. And that's the main, biggest part of this game is lo learning how to outflank your enemy. You're gonna do mass focus fire, which is overwhelming fire support, and then you're gonna also distract. That's the biggest three things I if you want to be a good destroyer player to help your team out that's the biggest thing i've seen that is very effective and very um productive for the uh the game so anyways let's take a look at the video and see how you like it all right team let's take a look at the Haragumo on the map tears of the desert a little uh a little bit up about the Haragumo while it's my favorite it sits atop the ij and gunboat branch of destroyers encapsulating and building upon the design elements and gameplay of the ship preceding her the most notable thing that it is insane uh, fire rate with main battery modification three. It's mounted with main battery specials. Reload skill is active. She's able to toss out 10 shells in 2.5 seconds, giving her a rate of fire of a 250 shells per minute with the contingent skills Adrenaline Lush and Fearless Brawler active. This approaches 300 shells per minute. Her reload time means a Haragum is able to machine gun enemy ships and continuously spit out endless streams of shells at enemies, making her extremely fun to play. So if you guys don't know, 100 millimeter guns on five turrets. That's 10 barrels each, ladies and gentlemen, and it is spitting out drag breath and you're going to take a look at it it encapsulates a 30 millimeter pin on all the guns kind of like uh, the german destroyer line it's got a high pin rate so therefore you don't need to build into um ifhe however i believe the 30 millimeters is good enough penetration for what it needs to do as well as has the great fire chance so we're going to take a look at that uh, action right here as you can see my team is pushing at the uh, we've already capped Charlie, going for Alpha. Main uh, bulk of the force is going behind the islands. We begin to open up and start taking and drawing enemy fire, kind of like that wild weasel mission where we want the enemy to start opening up and targeting us, getting to reveal their position, and it works. So we got the vampire actually opening up on us, and that's a very, very bad decision on his part. I don't think that the vampire, doesn't. first of all, doesn't have any heals. So for you to duke it out with a Haraguma is very, very deadly, especially at long ranges. And you're going to have to basically pop smoke and then reveal. And now you're stuck in the smoke. And if you get caught in a radar, you're done. So, and especially that the uh, five kilometer hydro on the vampire is not effective at long ranges that you actually have to push in. And again, it's very ineffective when you have radar cruisers lurking about. And I, don't, I believe, like I said, that the best thing a vampire can do in this situation is just run away. You cannot go duke it out. And there you go. A vampire is caught in the radar. And now you're basically at the mercy of gunfire. Be free uh, damage on the enemy's uh, team's part, or my part, that is, because now we have free shots. And we're not, uh, we weren't really targeted or detected at the time. Again, I just jumped out of my smoke. So he can't really return fire. And I have a Summers bearing down on him. So again, very, very difficult for the vampire in that situation going one on one. Or, or I say one versus two destroyers, and it's not really a fair fight for him. He's again, see, he has no heals. He can't he uh, heal back the mistake that we created there. So now he's pretty much just running away and can't do anything about it. So he's kind of out of the fight right now, and we're going to go ahead and see. We got, again, predicted that the cruisers of the enemy team are going to hug that island, so we know what's going to happen. We're going to see if we can drop as many shells. Look at the reload rate on this thing, especially with Adrenaline Rush kick in. 1.9-ish seconds reload rate on each gun. You've got five turrets firing, dishing out this amount of hate. Look, we've already started two fires right now. we got the Napoli in full reverse. We've got his buddy, the Petro, also in reverse. So basically, they are out of the fight, ineffective. And that's what you want to do. You want to press the enemy team. You've got our battleship Yamato just kind of free shots because nobody's shooting and looking at him. We've got our two cruisers in the back supporting our main cruiser, and we do lose our summers. That's it. definitely un unfortunate. And boom, we get the first kill. Splash one. Napoli goes down, which is very good because he was a very, very uh, heavy brawler. 
uh, very, especially with the buff that they gave to the secondaries. Napoli is a very, very formidable threat. Now we can actually push the the tactic objective right here, which is Alpha. We do lose our Hindenburg. Again, a Hindenburg loss is understandable because it is, in my personal opinion, in today's meta, a very squishy cruiser. Not much to do other than the 6-kilometer Hydro. I don't think it has any kind of effective uh, fight. Uh, no radar, no uh, really uh, good good detectable range. So we're really uh, losing that is understandable, but we got the rest of our team supporting in force. If you look at the mini-map, we have lost Charlie, but that is okay. We're not about capping first. We're about capping the longest and holding at the very end of the match to overwhelm the enemy. We definitely have time. It's only been the first five minutes. We're going to start raining fire and giving fire support on the Petro and see if we can draw out this vampire. Honestly, nobody's looking at us right now. Petro's not looking at us. Columbo's not looking at us. The only person we're looking at is the Vampire. Boom, our team, Yamato, free shot right there. Free, uh, Yamato not being abated is going to take that free shot, and it's really good to our advantage. He can snipe from long range, and that's a good effective role right there. We also have the Columbo also mo uh, retreating in force. Notice that in the previous, uh, uh, I believe, the last update, they got a buff to the Sigma. So a little bit better accuracy, but again, I don't think it's going to help them. Here we go. Vampire, unfortunately, made a ba bad mistake on his part because you're going to open up on a Haraguma which has a little bit more uh, health than you do and the amount of firepower you just cannot deal with and you really there's nothing left you can do other than take the damage and you only got one set of torpedoes there you go so splash two right there we get our second kill of the day taking out their cruiser and a destroyer and that gives us free reign on the Columbo notice his guns are not shooting or aiming at us therefore we get basically free damage at this point so we're going to go ahead and elect to open up and see if we can start as many fires as we can. Notice he's about three quarters health, but look at this. Watch the firepower of the Dragon's Breath Haragumo here. How much uh, health we are going to drain. And actually, another good part of this is we're pushing him away from the cap, giving our team kind of that little bit of ease up pressure so they can go into alpha unabated and unmolested so that then our team can go in and actually begin capping and start getting those points ticked up. And all while, we're also taking damage off the Columbo, removing him from the game and adding points to our scoreboard. So as you can see right now, the amount of firepower that the Haragumo can definitely rain down is something to uh, really not just mess around with and also have to deal with later on in the battle look at that the 30 mil pin on this thing is mostly good for the superstructure i think a lot of the, the uh, colombo is baked in 32 50 millimeter armor so we're not really getting you see we're getting a lot of those non pins as you can see on the right side of the screen there uh, a lot of that is just from the uh, surrounding deck of the superstructure so we're gonna have to try to aim and just walk the shells on to the superstructure as you can see i'm doing right now and guess what we're taking like 198, 198, 198, or 300 at a time there. But you know what? That's still damage, and we're starting fires. You know, like I said, it's it's small, but it's death by a thousand paper cuts, and it gets annoying over time. That even like a you know an elephant, he may be big and strong, but I mean, you just start taking out his legs slowly, one at a time, nick after nick. It's just gonna start really doing some damage, and there's nothing that Columbo can do about it. And really, like I said, we can take down giants just by constant sheer firepower and a constant presence of fi uh, sheer force that really just pushes him out of the fight. He's in effect. He's ineffective against the our uh, our friendlies, and now he's really just burning to death. And there's nothing he can do about it. So we're gonna go ahead and start pushing back now. That I know that he's probably gonna burn to death with a perma fire. We're gonna see if we, again we can start getting in position. Notice that the min I'm using the minimap constantly, head on a swivel, and boom, splash three. Garrett goes our third kill of the day, and we're again we see we're already pre-planning what is our next target gonna be. We're gonna start moving back towards Bravo, and we're gonna see if we can get some fire on the next guy, the Stalin grad right here. So he goes down, great shot right there again. See overwhelming firepower. There's nothing the Stalin grad can do. He's only got a few set of guns. He can only target so many. And then that Hayate decides to open up, and again I think this is a sheer mistake right here because we have our Petro that's in radar range which also is invisible uh, line of sight with him which means if we smoke up Hayate has nobody to spot for him look where here's a tactic here for good DD players like if you want to see this know your surroundings know your elements know the game that the tactics and the techniques of the game we're just gonna melt this Hayate and just look he's just draining health and we he just can't see us and he's also getting fired from the Petro and there's nothing more he can do. He's out of smokes right now at this point, I think. And boom, he just goes right, dies to the Dragon's Breath, and the Haragumo right there. Splash four. Four kills for the game. 87,000 damage in the first 10 minutes of the game. We did our part as a destroyer, eliminating four players off the team right there. That is the majority of their bulk. And that is the power of the Haragumo of what it can do. 
that's pretty much the game right there. The rest of the team will then go ahead and sweep in, like I talked about. There's nobody left for uh, people to defend a Bravo. And, of course, the remaining ship at Charlie has to defend Charlie from multiple angles, and it's just overwhelming firepower. Even if we had lost maybe half our fleet right here, it's just not fair. It's overwhelming, and then it's a large map. For him to actually travel back and forth, it would just take too much time. And like I said, destroyers reign the game because of the speed, concealment, and the firepower that it brings. And that's why I definitely enjoy uh, the DD role main gameplay. So I'll kind of speed it up just to let you see, um, uh, just finish it off and see the end stats right here. But tree is in sight. But yeah, so right there, capped off Bravo we talked about, and uh, there goes the Hindenburg, just going to get basically obliterated at the very end there. And. Um, that's it. I mean, we capped all three points. Like I said, it's not about who caps first. It's who can maintain the longest, who can uh, maintain their fleet and keep their health, and eventually outmaneuvering and out uh, and out spotting and out uh, maneuvering and out flanking the enemy. So that's the game with the Haraguma. All the amount of firepower you can dish out. Bill will be out in the, the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the strategy techniques. Uh, obviously, disclaimer: this probably won't uh, be very very effective in maybe Typhoon Hurricane Leagues. But again, this is just for the, the the basic player. Like, what basic strategies can you do? What do you guys like? And I'm always trying to show different techniques and strategies that actually uh, seem to work out. And again, we're not professionals by any means of the Super Typhoon Leagues, but we're doing the best we can with what we have available and. That's the uh, Tears of the Desert hotspot map for us right there. Here uh, is the um, build for the Haraguma for that Dragon's Breath kind of firepower. Full gunboat build. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.